persimmons trees have become popular in Lebanon. Their fruit is locally known as khaki or harma fruit. But this season's harvest was disappointing to some due to a fruit fly infestation. In this video, we explore fruit flies in Lebanon. We track the fly infestation of one persimmons tree. We also suggest some organic controls and identify friendly creatures that defend against fruit flies. Our persimmons fruit has always been shared with birds and with fruit bats and sometimes with hornets and other creatures. But all creatures take a fair share except the fruit fly, since most fruit flies can and often do ruin entire harvests. For our study, we monitored the number and types of fruit flies using bottle traps while hoping to eliminate enough fruit flies to control their spread. First, let's make sure that we are all on the same page of how fruit flies operate. This is a Queensland fruit fly injecting its eggs into a mango fruit. The eggs hatch and become larvae, eating their way into the fruit, causing it to rot. The number of eggs laid in a single sting uh, varies depending on the species of the fruit fly. Now, there are around 120,000 catalogued species of all flies including some 4,000 species of just fruit flies. Some are more destructive than others. Now, most countries import fruits and vegetables from all over the world, some of which may contain the eggs or puparia of invasive fruit fly species. For our case study, this was the status of our persimmons tree in early September. During the first week of September, we observed this first sting in an unripe green persimmons fruit. But other stung fruits were also on the ground, so obviously fruit flies had been active in early August if we allow for a few weeks for the incubation period. By midsummer, the number of stings increased and many fruit pieces had multiple sting marks. So we dissected some stung fruit for a clue to the identity of our mystery fruit fly. In this specimen, we had multiple sting locations on the same fruit. The stings were deposited with a transmitted fungus that formed a protective pod around the eggs. The dissection, of course, provided important clues as to the identity of the mother fly. Clues such as the shape and number of eggs and larvae. Now, at, the same, uh, at this stage, there was no other damage to the fruit, but it would not be commercially viable. In the second fruit, the eggs had already hatched into larva, and one of these survived our dissection. Now, the head was marked by the dark eyes and teeth of the larva, and it kept diving back into the fruit when exposed. But it was interesting that this larva survived in our refrigerator within the fruit at 4 degrees Celsius for a few days before dissection, but it died quickly when prevented from diving back into the fruit so it apparently survives by adapting slowly to changing temperatures. Now, these fruit flies are, again, Queensland fruit flies in Queensland, Australia. Their eggs are thin, long, and curvy, where other fly eggs may be stubby or oval-shaped like this one. And many egg types have protrusions like antennae. The eggs hatch into larvae, usually within two days. They molt or shed their skin a couple of times, before pupating into a puparium or a cocoon. Now they have black eyes and black teeth that identify the head end of the larva. And their teeth are shaped like black hooks that they use for digging and eating through the fruit. And amazingly, they also have another function, so they can jump off the fruit and pupate in the ground. Here seen magnified in a laboratory experiment, and here in an actual field recording, the larva jump, is jumping off a bell pepper fruit. And there goes another one. Inside the puparium, you can see the mouth, the eyes. And after a few days, you can see the grown eyes and the wings and legs become more obvious. And within a few days, a complete fly emerges through an escape hatch that leaves the pupa shell almost intact. Here flies grown in the lab 
are hatching. Such amazing fast growth of fruit flies has benefits for research, like breeding fly puparia for animal feed. Another important benefit is by breeding sterile male flies in the laboratory and releasing them to mate with females, but to have no offspring. To monitor the presence of fruit flies in our garden, we use simple homemade bottle traps with different bait fluids. We show how we made these traps in our previous videos. This particular trap was baited with a sweet vinegar fluid that we had set up in August. We emptied the trap daily and caught several species of fruit flies. But in mid-October, besides these baby olive flies, we also caught new dark flies with a wing pattern. We compared this new fly to online references and guessed that it was a cherry fruit fly, but we did not have an entomologist on hand. Now, the three fruit flies known to stink persimmons fruit are the Mediterranean fruit fly, or med fly for short, the Mexican fruit fly, and the Oriental fruit fly. But we had seen neither the Mexican nor the Oriental fruit fly in our garden before, but we had certainly seen the med fly. Now, the Mediterranean fruit fly is one of the world's most destructive agricultural pests since it can infest over 200 types of fruits and vegetables and can tolerate a wide range of temperatures. It heavily infested citrus fruit in California and Florida and caused great damage. However, in our garden in Lebanon, the med fly history with our citrus fruits has been much less dramatic and was mostly limited to damaging the thick skins of oranges and grapefruits. Uh, so, out of our entire fruit uh, season of grapefruits, oranges, mandarins, and lemons from our garden, only this one puparium cocoon was found inside the core of a grapefruit. So, our citrus fruits have not been good grounds for breeding fruit flies. But when met flies deposit their eggs under the skin of the fruit, they also deposit fruit decaying bacteria that is visible here in this orange as cloudy brown spots. Now, other references call this a fungal transmission, so we leave the distinction to the specialists. Now, this bacteria also causes sugar crystals to be exuded from the sweeter fruits, but in this case from this bitter orange, or called sour orange or Seville orange, that still has some sugar, and it is used to make marmalade, jams, and distilled blossom water. And this is what the bacteria infection looks like in a grapefruit, a very small sting mark outside, and a large fungal bloom inside. Now the fruit remains edible early in the infection stage, but the fruit's market value is affected. By comparison, this persimmon's fruit has thin skin and soft tissue, so the same fruit decaying bacteria tends to congeal a protective pod around the eggs. Back to our fly traps. The flies floating head down in this trap were the met flies, since they have large and buoyant abdomens. And also you can see the slackened stingers of other fruit flies. And here, after a small drizzle of October rain, is a brood of juvenile olive fruit flies, since this study was done in an olive county in North Lebanon. Now, the number of med flies increased noticeably starting early October. We also caught uh, other uh, new suspect flies that raised our doubts to the possibility of another offending fruit fly. So we made a graph of our trapping data to see if we can place the med fly on the persimmons crime scene. Since the med fly crosses over to target both seasons for persimmons and citrus fruits, we made this graph to cover the seasons of both fruits in Lebanon until January. The graph showed that we had stings in August, but missed catching any met flies. But either that, or there was another offending fruit fly. So we needed to identify the invasive fruit fly so we could target the proper species. Now let's digress briefly to the identification process of fruit flies. To identify a fruit fly from a reference manual, we usually compare the colors, wings, and abdomen shapes. But sometimes these features mutate in new environments, especially if the fly had time to mutate locally for a few years before it was identified. But we know that mutations can be triggered when creatures are challenged by survival needs. And this happens when flies find themselves in a totally different ecosystem, such as when they hatch out of imported fruits. Now, fruit flies can mutate visibly within a few years due to their short uh, generation cycle 
and their high population growth. Our res one research study reared 200 generations of fruit flies over four years and concluded that variances were detected to wings of fruit flies after that period. Now, for comparison, animal evolution may take several million years, while viruses like COVID-19 had several variants within one year. So when an invasive fly's color and possibly shape mutations happen, a visual comparison to cataloged flies becomes more challenging. Now back to our native fly specimens. These were some uh, specimens that we did not believe had a specific impact on persimmon fruit, but it would certainly be useful to determine if they were friend or foe at some point. And these were the three main specimens that were caught frequently in our fly traps. The olive fly is specialized only in olive fruit, so we took it off our list of suspects. And if we correctly identified the cherry fruit fly, then references said that it is only specialized in cherry fruits, and so the met fly remained as our only suspect for now. Now, by comparing to met fly larva images, we decided that our larva specimens were more similar to the pointy heads and stubby tails of the met fly larva. Now, our study was about controlling general fruit fly damage using bottle traps, and it evolved into a forensic identification of fruit fly larva, so we missed using clearer uh, macrophotography this season. And in hindsight, we could have also allowed the dissected larva to hatch after a few weeks to see which fruit fly came out. In any case, commercial farming cannot wait and usually uses genetic identification as the best way to stay ahead of an infestation. In late October, we were being overrun with stings, so we decided on an early harvest, which was not ideal for the flavor of our persimmon fruit, but it was better than losing the whole season. But we still had to ripen the fruits that were mostly still green. So we know that commercial farming uses ethylene gas that fruits emit naturally as they ripen. So placing unripe fruit in a closed bag improves the concentration of the ethylene gas and accelerates ripening. Also, adding another piece of ripe fruit, like an apple or a banana, in the bag would also help, but not always necessary. Now, if organic controls fail, we are left with the lesser of two evils, either pesticides or early harvest. But let's be very clear. Chemical pesticides are poisons that eliminate nature's defenses and percolate back to us, poisoning everything in their path. Now, flies can be controlled during three stages, inside the fruit as egg or larva, or in the ground as puparia cocoons, or in the air as flies. Now, controlling fruit flies inside the fruit is not effective, since microscopic parasites or birds destroy the fruit anyway, so it is better to remove and destroy the infested fruit by burning it or sealing it in a plastic bag and perhaps leaving it in the sun. Now, controlling the fly in the soil is effective since overturning the soil exposes the puparia cocoons to predators like birds, beetles, and ants. And once the fly is in the air, its predators are mostly birds and bats and spiders. So fly traps uh, should be used for monitoring and control and the use of organic uh, pesticides uh, where available and using exclusion bags and netting to protect fruits. But the proven effective method is by rearing and releasing sterile male flies, where the fruit fly, male pupa, are reared commercially and dyed with a distinctive color. They are then sterilized with a small radioactive dose and then hatched and enhanced with female attractants and released over infested areas. Eventually, the parent generation will die and leave no offspring. You can find useful links in the description box of our video. Now, we're not aware of highly effective organic pesticides for the met fly, but we use uh, neem tree oil as an organic spray pesticide for leafy vegetables, but some claim that it also makes met flies lethargic or lazy and slows down their reproduction, so we hope to test that for next season. The overall strategy for organic controls is the combination of field sanitation, fly traps to monitor and control flies, organic pesticides, where available the sterile mail program, exclusion nets and bags, and of course the support of local agricultural regulations. 
Now, spring begins on March 21st in Lebanon, and our persimmon tree started blooming already, so it is now time to start some field sanitation, and we start installing fly traps early in June. Now, the next video clip is about organic measures to protect the harvest from fruit flies. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to be notified of our future videos.